The reality of the Gospel World Outreach Ministries presents the Voice of Deliverance broadcast, featuring the explosive preaching, bold teaching, and the powerful prayer of deliverance of Heaven's Ambassador, Leonard Ford. Brother Ford is a minister that does what others don't, and he has a ministry that goes where others won't. He and his wife, Jesse, travel across America and around the world, preaching hope and bringing deliverance. Whether they are in the church, under the gospel tent, or on the mission field, they boldly declare that if you continue in the word, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now I present to you, Brother Ford. See, this ain't something she went out and drove by and picked up. This was the Holy Ghost letting her know why would he do that? Because he loved the adulterer and he didn't want him to die like that. But if you don't pass the supernatural, the church will be filthy. But when you pass the supernaturally, all of a sudden the church gets clean. Why? Because they know like what Charles just told y'all. The Holy Ghost going to tell them anyway. The Holy Ghost going to reveal it anyway. So I'm going to be clean. I'm going to be sanctified. I remember men of God that's now bona fide men of God said when they were teenagers and the prophet of God was coming to church they be repent. And then they tell God, Lord, it's under the blood. You can't tell him now, Lord. I don't repent. You can't. <laughs> they were trying to get it right. And I know some preachers that was repenting when the prophet came. Come on here. I've been preaching to step over into that room and folk hit the door. I said, hey, you at the door. Stop right there. God's got a word for you. They was trying to get out with the love of God. Say, lasso that booger. Bring them back in here. See, we need signs back in the church. Real signs. You're going to put my business up. Christian, what business you got that can't be told? What business you doing that can't be exposed? Transparent living is the call for the kingdom. If you're living clean, go on, speak, man. Come on here. We in a time now when you're so in love with one another that you can't stand to be away from them. But you're so full of the fear of the world and the powers of darkness and the agitation that you can't stand to be in the same room for an hour and a half. What's wrong with us? We need deliverance. We need victory. We need the powers of God broken. You sit down and talk to folks. They feel better for a season like it's a laxative. But the difference is... They haven't got in the presence of God. They haven't got God in their bellies. And we're sitting around, well, I don't want to say nothing right now. But God is the same. He don't change. Jesus and John would repent. You vipers, you snakes, do some works for repentance. Stop all this talking. Jesus said, you swimming with your lip, but your heart is far from me. We don't want that kind of preaching today. He's fussing. They've been telling me that all my ministry, so go ahead. I'm anointed to fuss, I guess. And on my, watch this, servants. See, ain't no big eyes and little yous. Sons, daughters, old men, young men, servants, handmaidens. I'm going to pour out in those they Look at the preposition again. Of my spirit. He's going to pour out again of his spirit. Everybody can get filled with the Holy Ghost, but we think only the fivefold can prophesy. No, ma'am, no, sir. God's in a move now. He wants the janitor to be walking in the Holy Ghost. The other day, Brother Tim sent me uh, a promo. I think it was a Lebanese pastor. Had a big work going, a big school, and all the employees there, they was getting ready to feed people by the hundreds. And all of a sudden, his, something hit his spirit, and he got grieved, and he just said, stop, go home. But we got, you know, we feed nothing. Go home. And he said he got like an attitude. And they was trying to talk to him. He said, leave now. He said, I don't have a clue why I did that. He said, they left and they got home. And about two hours, there was a major explosion. Tore his church up. Tore the school up. Twelve years, he had took the building. If everybody would have been in there, look at the fatalities that would have been. But because the man was functioning in the supernatural, that was a sign. They said, how did you know? I don't know how I knew. I just knew I got grieved. I got angry. And I said, go home. And I came to tell you, that's the kind of move that God is trying to get us to step into. It's here. It's right here, right now. And the devil got so many distractions, uh, we don't realize what's going on. Uh, but I came to tell you uh, that God uh, has moved uh, in such a way uh, that you're not going to be able. Look what he said right here. He said, and I will, I will show 
works wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath blood and fire and vapor and smoke. I came to tell you that we're in a time when God is about to do some things and we got to wake up. Look at verse 22. In verse 22, the Bible says, ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus, that's Yeshua, y'all, of Nazareth, a man. We ain't got that yet. We still trying to make Jesus be God in the flesh, meaning he's in a realm. Can't nobody else walk in. But he said, the works he did shall we do. That's why he told us over and over and over again, I am Ben Adam. I'm son of Adam, son of Adam. I'm, I'm, I'm a flesh man. I've got a body. I get tired. I get hungry. I eat. I sleep. I'm like the first Adam. I came to show you what it's like when you got the nature of God in you and a body giving you legal right to be in the earth. That man, watch this, was approved of God among you by miracles, wonders, and signs. Watch this, which God did by him in the midst of you. And you also know it. God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul that from his body was sent aprons and handkerchiefs. Demons came out. Sick was healed. Paul was a man. Jesus, they touched his clothes and they got healed by the power of God. God is a saint. Let me roll you back to 1985. A friend of mine was right up here in Kensington, Arkansas, right up by Searcy. And he went to a little church about this size. And it was jam-packed. He was preaching under the power of God. And he had one cloth. He wiped his face with the same cloth every night. That last night, he had standing room only, had such a move of God. And when he left, he had laid his cloth down and forgot about it. And the next morning, the pastor came in to clean the church, to get the church ready ready for Sunday morning and she said oh my God the preacher left his rag and when she picked it up she fell out under the power of God the assistant pastor was coming to help pastor get the church ready and when the assistant pastor walked in she saw her pastor on the floor passed out she ran to her watch this with fear she ain't no discerning she feel like pastor must have had a heart attack and she was down there patting her on the face pastor wake up pastor and the pastor rose up she said what's wrong what's wrong she said girl I don't know she but that preacher left his rag on the pulpit. She said, when I picked it up, all I said was the preacher left the rag. And when I grabbed it, she said, the next thing I know is you telling me, asking me what's wrong. I don't know what went on. She said, oh, pastor, she grabbed it. Bam, she fell out. Watch this. When she fell out, five minutes later, she got up and said, Pastor, while I was out, Jesus said, cut this up and give it to every sick member. It ain't been the church. Y'all know I got them sick and shut in list. He said, give it to everybody on the sick and shut in. They cut the preacher's rag up, and they, they didn't clean the church. They went to delivering prayer clause. That Sunday morning, the church is full with members. Over 30 sick and shut in folk hadn't been the church in two months. Was healed of the power of the rag. What happened? That was an anointing. That was was a sign and a wonder. The preacher didn't say give out prayer clothes, but the Holy Ghost said, I left an anointing in there. I want you to take it around the community and get folks delivered. And I came to tell you, that's what we're living at now. I seen that same preacher. He was preaching one night and he had on a red shirt. Hallelujah. And he preached. That shirt was dripping. Nothing. I mean, while he holding his arm over, water running out of his elbow. And he looked over there and he told his wife, he said, baby, go get me a dry shirt and a robe. He said, God told me to cut this shirt up and give it to everybody that's got somebody sick at home. He took his shirt off. Hallelujah. They took scissors and cut that shirt up and took it home. Hallelujah. And the next day, that next night of revival, the house was full because folks got delivered by a rag. I came to tell you, rags don't heal. Only God can do signs and wonders when God begins to do. Now watch this, watch this. Now you got somebody going to cut their shirt up. Booger, you just lost a shirt. You should have kept your shirt. Your shirt. Your shirt ain't going to heal nobody. See, we, you can't, listen, you can't fake steak. It's either God or it's not. You can't just go do what you want to do, do what you saw. No, we said God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. God approved Jesus. Uh, and uh, Look at verse 43. 
Verse 43 says, then fear came on every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Watch this. Look at verse 30 in chapter 4. Chapter 4, you know, when they had got them beat and they went back to verse 29, they started praying, but I ain't reading the whole prayer. I just want you to pick it up right here in verse 30. I just want to give you one verse and see how they prayed. Acts 4 and 30. And by stretching forth thy hand to heal and that what signs and wonders may be done by the name of your holy child Jesus. We act like Jesus' name don't exist no no more. We are like Jesus' name. It's just some little token tradition the way that you close a prayer or make a prayer. But I came to tell you he's the king and the whole kingdom bows to his name. At the name of Jesus, every knee got to bow. And in case you don't know it, the devil's got a knee and it's got to bow. Every tongue's got to confess. You know the devil got a tongue because he's a liar. But you can, make the, you can make that liar say, Jesus is Lord. And I came to tell you, not confessing salvation, but letting you know he ain't Lord over you. Jesus is. And he got to get his filthy hands off of you when you walk in your place and begin to put a demand on your covenant, put a demand on the powers of God, begin to honor the king and let the devil know I'm not living like this. I ain't going out like this. My life's about to change and it's going to stay changed big time because Jesus God told me today, he told me yesterday actually, he said, son, the time of the kingdom is now. The time of the kingdom is now. It's time for the kingdom to be manifested now in the believers. He said, many have gotten distracted. Many have figured out what it's going to be. Many have sat down and became, well, you know, they, they, they secular prophets. Brother BK is in heaven. He told us in 1987, he said, this social gospel is going to blanket the world. The church ain't going to be what it is if you men of God don't stand Stand up and preach and stop compromising. Well, look at it now. If this social gospel haven't taken over the churches, churches don't know how to preach. It's hard to go to church and get convicted of your sins because everything's all right and God understands and that's under the blood and grace got you. So just go on fornicating and keep coming to church. Just keep smoking and keep making your confession. Keep fornicating and say this is the last time and this ain't going to happen no more because I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Yes, and I do speak in tongues as the Spirit gives me utterance, but I came to tell you real repentance. You, you be godless sorrow, workers repentance. It's the goodness of God that leads you to repentance. The goodness of God convicts your heart so you don't just change your mind. You get so convicted and you feel like, like David, Lord, before you and you alone have I done this sin. Lord, I don't want to hurt you no more. Lord, help me change. And that's when you begin to turn from the inside and you get in the word and you wash your mind with the word as your mind gets renewed need. Amen. Fornication is no longer a temptation to you. You let the devil know I'm saved and sanctified. Filled with the Holy Ghost. I represent the king and his kingdom. I am not interested. Come on here. I love Jesus. Yes, I do. I love him too much to fornicate with you. Let the devil know I ain't backing up. I ain't compromising. I told y'all last week no wed, no bed, no ring, nothing, no contract, no contact. But we in a time now well, you know, just this one time. The Bible said, let it not be one named among you that become a saint. Tell us wrong. You've been going to church and all you hear, well, you know, it ain't nobody perfect but Jesus. Now, everybody doing something wrong. The, the pot can't talk about the kettle. If you point your finger, it's five pointing back at you, four pointing back at you. And when they get through, the Bible still says all homemongers go going to hell. I know, I know, I know. See, that's what I'm saying. You, you've been in a weak, watered-down church so long, you don't have a stomach for truth. You don't have a stomach. But the Holy Ghost love you too much to let you stay out there like that. My, my wife can tell you, the church we got saved in, Lord, have mercy. Something like everybody in church was shacking up, all the young folks. All of us was in our 20s. We came in there. We were status. You know, we listened to Miller Jackson. We were shacking up. But when that preacher got through preaching, we left there and I ain't going back up in there. He all up See, we didn't say in my business. He, he up there telling everybody what I do. I ain't going back over there. And look right at me when he said, but guess what? Next Sunday, we right back up in there. We don't know why we back up in there. We couldn't stay away. Couldn't stay in there and couldn't stay out of there. But you know what happened? All of a sudden, he did like 20 weddings in 1980. By 82, he had 20 new babies. Come on here. What happened? Folks broke into something because the man was preaching under the powers of God because he was bold enough to stand flat-footed and look the devil.
devil in the face uh, and let us call, let us know that sin has a recompense. The wages of sin is still death and the gift of God is still eternal life. And I came to tell you when you preach the truth, lift your voice like a trumpet, cry loud, it's burning Ezekiel, if you fail to warn them, blood is going to be on your hands when you preach deliverance. Folk get delivered. Oh, I I done had them tell me, I ain't never coming to hear you preach no more. You preach like ain't nobody saved but you. you. You too holier than thou. I said, I don't have a holier than thou attitude, but since you ain't holy, I am holier than thou. Come on here. If I want to be as holy as me, then get saved. What's wrong with you? Well, I want to be everybody's friend. I want everybody to like me. Let me tell y'all a secret. Everybody didn't like Jesus. They ain't going to like you. Come on here. What you want is to preach what God say preach. I came to tell you signs and wonders are about to break out. I'm not talking about three months from now. I ain't talking about in December. I'm talking about we in it now. It's rising. The tide is rising right now. You got to understand God is doing things that we are missing. I came to tell you hallelujah. God is flowing. But see the tide is rising. You got to understand God told me this year birth defects would be healed. We've already seen two. Come on now. God said this year that this would be a year. Hallelujah the lame would walk, but he said before the year closes, amputated limb would be restored. Come on here. He told me blind eyes would come open. Cataracts would fall off folks' eyes like a contact lens. They would look at it and it would be, the cataract would fall off. Hallelujah. Glaucoma would be healed. We saw so much night vision. We saw so many cataracts healed in Missouri, I mean in, uh, in, uh, in Louisiana in March under the very power of God. And I came to tell you, the tide is constantly rising. We got to wake up right here a couple of years ago. Philip Steele stood right here and prayed for a young woman and her leg grew out. I came to tell you, God ain't never stopped. We got to make a decision. I'm going to go all for it. I'm all in. I want it all. You go back and read church history. When you read about men like George Mueller, when you read about men like Whitfield and John Laker, you see, we read about the miracles. I read about their character. They all were holy men. They were men that believed in holiness. They were men that believed in clean living. When you got boogers now, all they believe in is living large. It's about that paper. Trying to get me some bank. I want you to break me off a piece. Why don't you try breaking off some holiness? Breaking off some lifestyle, breaking off some character. I ain't never seen it. I ain't never seen it like it is now. How? Why would you? Why would you want to? Why would you want to date somebody that say they're a preacher, prophet, evangelist, whatever, and y'all fornicate? So what kind of future you got? What kind of future you got? If he can't keep you out to bed with him before you get married, what's it gonna keep him out to bed with the neighbor after you get married? See, you know, y'all know, I know, I know, but that's all right. That's why I'm here. I'm anointed for this. This is my assignment. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he anointed me for this. See, that's what's wrong. This generation don't want nobody to talk straight to them. But you got to make a decision. I don't care if you young or old. Hallelujah. Once you make that commitment, that's a covenant. You don't break that. You don't, well, he made me mad. Well, he lost his job. Well, you knew your book wouldn't work for your marriage. And come on, you said for better or for worse. Come on here. Well, not that you was in such a hurry. Like one of my relatives got married because she wanted to get married before she died. And the boogie she married almost killed her. No, I'm, I'm serious. Beat her sister Kathy and left her for dead under the bridge. And she said she heard all that noise of the cars going over the bridge. And when she woke up in a puddle of water, she said, I know where I'm at. And my sister lived three blocks up the street. If I can get to my sister's house, I'm going to leave. She said, I came out that ditch in a nightgown running. And listen here, the devil done told the brother, go back and make sure she dead. He done turned that Eldorado Cadillac around and headed back down there. But he was going so fast, he, he missed her and he saw that nightgown. He knew it was her, but he couldn't make a U-turn. He had to go to the end of the street to turn his car around. And when he got back, amen, to, 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 to the doorstep, to you know the street, her foot was on the doorstep. And she said, I hit that door with both hands. I'm be, it's 3 o'clock in the morning, man. Ain't nobody trying to let you in here. But my other sister said, I knew my sister's voice. And for my 
sister to be beating my door, hollering like that something had to be wrong. She said, I opened the door and snatched her in, and he came running, and I closed the door in his face. And she's alive today, but she ain't married to him. So I came to tell you, you better slow down and back up and take the time to hear from God. When you sit down with your man of God, and your man of God tell you, handsome is a snake. But pastor, ain't nobody else asking me. Now, now, I said a man of God. I ain't talking about these demons we got in the pool pit trying to have a harem. Don't want nobody in marriage so they can have them all. I ain't talking about no foolishness. But when you got an authentic man of God counseling you, telling you, postpone that back up a minute. Give us, give us some time. Come on, let true colors come out. But no, you just read it. I don't want to lose him. <laughs> you might want to throw him away. <laughs> and, and, and look, sometimes it's her. That need to be deposited in that round five. Y'all looking so over, but that's good. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. Chapter five. Chapter five. Chapter five. I'm just trying to tell you signs and wonders. You know, Joshua stopped the stone. But I know men that have had signs and wonders. <clears throat> Verse 12. And by the hands of the apostles were what? Many signs and wonders wrought where? Among the people, and they were all with one accord. See, well, now, let, let, me just, let me just bring it to, to, to now. Uh, a little, little lady in, in Dallas, Texas, Joanne Osborne. Her husband got stupid and divorced her for no reason. She ain't done nothing wrong. He got deceived. I told him. I, I didn't even know the man like that. I had met him one time. I listened to him on the radio in Little Rock, Arkansas, teaching. And I called his spiritual son that knew him well. And I said, call your spiritual daddy and tell him, stop preaching that message on demons. He, looked, he said, that man was preaching 20 years before you got saved. He said, hey, that's an apostle of God. I said, bro. God gave me a revelation on principalities, powers, and rulers. At that time, I didn't have the revelation on spiritual wickedness in high places. I said, but when God gave me the revelation, the one thing God told me was to major on the power of God over it, major on the blood and the word and how to stop it. I said, this man is preaching that the demons are real, and he's magnifying the devil so much in his teaching, he don't even act like God exists. I said, if he don't stop it, he's going to get demonized and shipwreck his ministry. That boy hung up on me. He hung up. I'm not telling my spiritual father that. Click. It wasn't three months. He got demonized. Before he finished that, he said he had 26 messages on demons are real. He got demonized. Next thing you know, he silenced his wife. She couldn't sing. She couldn't preach. She couldn't testify. Then he started saying she had committed adultery. That's when his three daughters rose up. He said, Daddy, won't mean no disrespect. But Mama hold it. She said, Mama ain't got time. To commit adultery. She said, by the time she run up, everyone, we got to go and get back to the house and come back and pick us up. Ain't no time for her to commit adultery. He silenced them. Ran off with his secretary, went to Mississippi, divorced his wife, married them. They got divorced. Come back here, married another one, and, and divorced her. Don't nobody know where he went. The woman of God was left with them three little girls. And she was so hungry for God, she wouldn't quit going to church. Had lost their church because of him. And she one night, she had 26 cents. On her way to revival, and then the amber light came on. Only y'all know what that means, don't you? You know the one over there by the gas tank. And the amber light came on. Then she said she was praying, God, I need to make it to the service station. She got twenty six cents, and this was the day of the full service station. You couldn't. Just, I mean, you can't pay at the pump for twenty six cents. <laughs> she goes in and tells the guy. She says, I need to get twenty six cents on pump number three. He looked at how she was dressed. He could see the girls in the car looking. He said, you get to church? She said, yes, sir. He said, ma'am, just fill it up. Just fill it up. See, these are the kind of things that used to happen for saints. Not because they went in there and pulled their dress up all they need. But because they had enough integrity to trust God to multiply 26 cents worth of gas. I know a preacher had 92 cents. And coming from Oklahoma, he has gone all the way down to, to uh, Park in Arkansas. And he told his wife, he said, baby, God has told me to go to Park. And I done booked a revival. I've been believing God for the last two weeks. He said, I ain't got but 92 cents. Ain't nothing I got that we can sell. He said, I got it. She said, baby, God told you to go, go. Let's pray. The Bible in it to agree or touch it. Whatever they ask is shit. And I'm not talking about tempting God. I'm talking about faith in God. They agreed. And she looked at him and said, baby, I believe God going to buy you some gas on the way. How many know God will give you more on the way? 
He jumped in that tank. Now, I know you, most, most traveling folk, you know how far your car can go. Even after it hit that amber light, you say, okay. Like, now, mind the tank, you got 25 miles, you got 30 miles, whatever. He said he drove till he knew it wasn't safe to pass his exit. He took that exit, another full service station. The guy come out there with his rag. How can I help you? He can tell by the van. He said, you a reverend? He said, yes, sir. He said, what you need? He said, give me 92 cent worth. He said, I went on to the bathroom. I was too embarrassed to watch him pump it. <laughs> went to the bathroom, and when he come out, the gas, you know, you put too much gas in it, run back out. The tenant said, Reverend. Now, what he told you, he said, I'm going to make it a dollar. He's going to make it a dollar. When they got the 98 cent, it stopped. He said, Reverend, it won't hold a dollar. He said, well, thank you. Got in the car, turned it on, the hand went all the way over to the F. And wasn't nothing wrong with the float in the tank. He made it all the way down the parking and preached the whole week on that tank of gas before he put some more gas in it to come back home. See, that ain't the way we that ain't the way we live now. If I ain't got but 92 cents, listen, I'm out to call you. I'm sorry, I can't make it. Can y'all Western Union be enough for gas and we'll take it out to all friends? Don't, don't, don't talk to me about wisdom. I'm trying to tell you about when people believe God and God. Now, don't let me tell you about Charles Capps flying in an airplane and his gaze in him, he ain't got enough gas to go, and he prayed the prayer of faith. Hallelujah! And God put gas in the tank, and when he landed to refuel, he said, "Let me know how much gas is in the tank." And when they put the, the thing down in there, he still had a quarter tank of gas. What happened? The signs and wonders when people live clean and believe God, and we got to wake up and realize God the same. Jesus Christ has not changed. He's still a miracle working God, but somebody got to get a lifestyle conducive with the kingdom, and then watch. The king be the king. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop reading. I got so many scriptures on, on, on signs and wonder, but I'm trying to tell you something. God told me yesterday is now. This is the time now. We got to get our expectation up. See, this, just because it's a time don't mean it's going to happen for you. You can be hearing testimonies the rest of the year. Or even that, you can get so close, you'll be seeing the miracles. And still it ain't happening for you. And you can be like Sister Kellerman. Eat one, can you imagine eating one week off the same chicken with two girls? She said, Mr. Brenner, she, said she ate the chicken and said, God, what are we going to do? And God said, put it back in the refrigerator. She said, these bones, he said, put the bones back in the refrigerator. Y'all know how it is. You got them canned goods. You ain't worried about vegetables. You got, you got your bag of rice, your bag of beans. She said, the girls looked at her like, Mama, what you doing? She said, the Lord said, put the bones back in the refrigerator. Well, they did it. Went on to school. Next evening, she come back. Amen. Fix the vegetables. Open the refrigerator. It's meat back on the bone. She took out that same chicken. Owned it up. They ate the chicken that day down to the bone. God said, put it back in the refrigerator. Five days, they ate the same chicken. I'm talking about Mary Kellerman from Agape Church. No preacher, no teacher, no apostle. She ain't from back in the 40s. She's right now, right here. God, I'm trying to tell y'all, God ain't never changed. Jesus Christ the same. And we got to wake up and realize if God did it for Maryland, he'll do it for you. What he did for John G. Lake, he'll do it for us. What he did for Wigglesworth, he'll do it for us. What he did for Kevin, he'll do it for us. You got to understand what he did for Whitfield, he'll do it for us. We just got to trust God and believe God and step out on his word and stop being so encouraged through the uncompromising message that you heard today. If you would like to have this message in its entirety, send $8 for compact disc or $20 for video to the Reality of the Gospel Ministries Incorporated, P.O. Box 1640-91, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72216. If you would like to become a partner with this ministry, you may do so by joining the Ally 200 Club at $25 a month, or you may become a Truth Ally for $10 or more each month. Send your offerings to the Reality of the Gospel Ministries Incorporated, P.O. Box 164091, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72216. If you continue in God's word, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free.